This morning on CBS 2 News, a deadly shooting at an Oregon grocery store devastates the community. The investigation underway this morning. Plus, a federal judge may appoint a special master to look at documents taken from Mar-a-Lago. How soon the U.S. government has to respond. And NASA set to lift off later this morning. A look at the mission to the moon now underway. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise on this Monday, August 29th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Well, a little bit cooler start to our morning. The weekend brought a little bit of a nice breeze through Marcos, but that's not going to stick around for long once you see that seven day forecast. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Sarah. That's right. We have a nice warm up uh, over the next several days, triple digit highs. But let's start out by taking a look at our current temperature. It is a nice chilly, uh, chilly morning out there. Calm as you're getting ready for work. Uh, looking at some of our current temperatures right now, 44 out in Idaho City, uh, 57 out there in Ontario and then down in Mountain Home there, 55 Glens Ferry, 57 degrees. Now we are going to see mid 90s for this afternoon. As you can see here, 95 Boise Mountain Home, Emmett, 90 there Caldwell, but we are going to start to see a warm up into the triple digits for four consecutive days, folks. Here's a look at that smoke uh, surface smoke forecast. We are going to see hazy conditions in the valley for today and of course in those mountain regions as those fires continue to burn out there. We see a little uh, a little clear clearing happening, but uh, we're still going to see those hazy conditions and here's a look at what's in stores for the next several days. 90s for today, hazy conditions and triple digits this week and that's smoke sticking around Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 501 on your Monday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Very quiet kicking off your Monday morning. Hope you all are having a good start to it. Not much to report though. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we do begin in Oregon this morning where a deadly gunfire broke out at a supermarket in Bend, Oregon last night, leaving two people dead. It was loud enough to make me and three other employees ran into a walk-in refrigerator and closed the door and stayed there. We stayed hidden until wow. the authorities arrived. People were running out of Safeway and I mean the police were here though in a matter of like five seconds of that happening. Again, this happened just last night. Several people calling 911 from inside the shopping center. Police say the shooter was later found dead inside. Officers responded and when they arrived, they entered the Safeway immediately, still hearing shots. They found the apparent shooter dead inside Safeway. Officers say they found an AR-15 style rifle and a shotgun near the shooter's body. Authorities are investigating a motive. We will bring you the latest on the investigation as it develops this morning. Well, two Phoenix police officers have been injured during a shooting north of Phoenix. Now, Phoenix police say those officers were responding to reports of a shooting nearby. Now, both officers are being treated at a hospital this morning. Both. Our officials say they are both in stable condition. No suspect has been identified yet, and what led up to the shooting is still under investigation. Well, a man set fire to a residential complex in Houston over the weekend. Police say he did it to lure people out and then shoot them as they escaped the flames. Now, four people were killed, including a, the gunman. He was shot by police once they arrived. Now, the property owner says the suspect was recently evicted. I come out and there's a body laying here and a body laying over here. And and then when I pulled my car over around there, there's a body laying over here. It is very crazy. Yeah, it's brutal murder. I mean, the guy lost his head, I guess. I don't know. Neighbors say they're still searching for the manager's three year old dog, Duke, who was also shot in the chaos. Turning to developing news this morning, a federal judge in Florida says she preliminarily intends to appoint a special master to the case involving classified records that the FBI removed from former President Trump's Florida estate. Now, the heavily redacted affidavit released on Friday says the FBI found about 184 classified documents in January and more than two dozen marked top secret. Now, Trump's lawyers are requesting a special master to independently review those records and determine if any need to be returned to Trump. On the one hand, it could be, uh, as some Republicans think, just a, 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 you know, just a, a political witch hunt. On the other hand, it could be really serious 
you know, federal felonies Where that do we don't know about on yet. That? The U.S. government has until Tuesday to file a response. Now, the judge is scheduling a hearing to consider whether to grant Trump's request for a special master. That happens on Thursday. Well, turning to Ukraine this morning, new video showing new attacks near Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Now, both Russia and Ukraine are claiming the other country is to blame for what you're seeing here. Now, the plant, it's controlled by Russian forces, but operated by Ukrainian engineers. Now, international experts say the latest shelling underscores the risk of a nuclear catastrophe. And now inspectors say they're on their way to Zaporizhia power plant. They're worried the war in Ukraine could cause an accident. The International Atomic Energy Agency says their goal during the visit is to make sure that the Ukrainian nuclear facility is both safe and secure. Well, happening this morning, all eyes on the launch pad of 39B at Kennedy Space Center as NASA starts to kick off its program to get back to the moon for the first time in 50 years. But engineers had to overcome an issue during the fueling process. Now, Skylar Henry is at the Space Center with the latest on the Artemis One launch. The countdown was on for NASA's new moon rocket until a hydrogen leak this morning slowed things down. The issue appeared in the same area during a dress rehearsal in the spring. Jeremy Parsons is on the team in charge of sending the rocket and Orion capsule on a more than one month journey. I've always wanted to be a part of going back to the moon and this is that first big step. The $4 billion unpiloted mission is a bit of a test run, going beyond the far side of the moon before returning to Earth's orbit, splashing into the Pacific, traveling a total of more than 1.3 million miles. But you're testing it to its limits to make sure that these things are capable to do what y'all are designing it to do? At every level, right down to the smallest piece, we test, we test, we test again. Then when we've integrated it together, we test once more. The mission kicks off NASA's hope of getting people back on the moon to its south pole as early as 2025. When you build a spacecraft, you can't take any chances, certainly not when you're building a human rated spacecraft. Setting the stage for future human exploration into deep space and possibly a landing on Mars. Skyler Henry, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. Now, if today's launch does get scrubbed due to weather or other reasons, NASA will try again on Friday. Turning to fire season this morning, new evacuation orders on the Four Corners fire that's burning west of Lake Cascade. Now, fire crews, or that fire grew by more than a thousand acres over the weekend. That's thanks to winds over 30 miles an hour. That fire now most active on both the south and east sides. The Valley County Sheriff has now ordered home evacuations on West Mountain. That's from Campbell Creek south to Raspberry Road. And the staging area for all evacuees is Kelly's Whitewater Park. We have more information on our website. Now that same weather front also increasing activity on the Moose Fire. That's the one burning north of Salmon. Now the winds did die down. They were still up to 40 miles an hour over the weekend. So far this fire season, about 123,000 acres have burned here in Idaho. A vast majority of those acres coming from this moose fire, which is sitting at 97,000 acres this morning. Well, Marcos, it was a beautiful weekend. We had temperatures in at least the mid to low 80s is what yeah, you're telling me. Upper, uh, upper 80s as well, but it, it was a nice, beautiful weekend, Sarah. It, it got me a little excited for fall, but yes. I know that once I looked at that seven day forecast coming up this week, yeah, that's not gonna stick around for it's long. playing mind games with us. <laughs> it we, is, yeah, it's we, not we, fair. We have some triple digits in store for this week. About four consecutive days are forecasted to be uh, in those triple digit highs. So uh, this morning though, nice and cool, uh, 60 degrees out there. Here's a look at that hourly forecast, uh, 90s there by 2 p.m. and then getting up into the about mid 90s by this afternoon. And uh, looking at our current temperatures right now, uh, as I said, sitting in the 60s there, Meridian there, 61, Boise there, 60, Nampa, 54, and then Glens Ferry there at 65, and Ontario there, 57. Looking at that bus stop forecast as you're getting the kids ready for school, uh, nice uh, 60 degrees as they're off to school, and then warming up, obviously, into the 90s, partly, uh, partly cloudy by this afternoon as they're getting home from school. And I'm going to show you here our temperature history. As you know, Sarah just mentioned, the weekend we had nice, cool, near normal temperatures, right? 86 there, 84. Uh, but before that, prior to that, we were in, we were above normal, above average for this time of year. So uh, going to be warming up once again into those triple digit, digit highs, folks. And these are our highs for today. 
mid 90s there Mountain Home, 95 there Boise, and then 90 out in Idaho City, and then there's Caldwell there at 93. So nice uh, temperatures about five degrees above normal. We are going to be warming up though, as I mentioned, and here's a look at that quick uh, dog walking forecast uh, 58 to 62 this morning and that sunrise happening at 7.05 a.m. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. 510 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look for you this morning. Everything running along smoothly. Yeah, no reports of anything to slow you down on our main roads or secondary roads. Hope y'all are having a good morning. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, this Wednesday marks the beginning of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. CBS2 proud to be the official TV home for the event. We've teamed up with CapEd Credit Union and Town Square Media. Now it's something radio host Kevin Miller says people look forward to all year long. You know, it's amazing that you have people from all over the country, all over the world, come to Boise, Idaho to experience balloons. And for those new to the area, that event starts with CapEd Kids Day on Wednesday. This is when kids get to go get to go up in tethered balloons. You can see a little peak right there. Now the event continues through Sunday with hot air balloons taking off each morning from Ann Morrison Park. People in Idaho love balloons. It makes us all feel like we're little kids. And whether you're a little kid genuinely or kid at heart, this is an event you don't want to miss. Yeah, you heard it here first. You do not want to miss it. Now, Friday evening is extra special with the Night Glow Spectacular. This is when balloons are lit up after dark and get up close and personal. Now, for Kevin Miller and others, it's a must-see event. If you want to be a part of the community or you are a part of the community, why not join us once again? To learn more about the spirit of Boise or see photos from years past, head on over to IdahoNews.com. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the White House set today to push their student loan forgiveness plan. Why some aren't on board. And the governor holding a special session later this week, how he's hoping to help Idahoans through inflation. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. 80% of today's kids don't recognize this item was common in classrooms 25 years ago. Hmm, the answer? an overhead projector. Oh, that blows my mind. All right, well now for today's question. In a new poll, only 21% of Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Cascade for today. Smoky conditions, a high of 87, that can, uh, smoke continuing overnight with a low of 45, and tomorrow a high of 91. Well, this morning, the White House will continue to make the case that its student loan plan will be good for Americans and for the economy. Now, the plan implemented by the Biden administration forgives federal loan debt of up to $10,000 for people making less than $125,000 a year, plus 27 million Americans with Pell Grants. Those are typically given to those from lower income families. They'll be forgiven up to $20,000. Now, national correspondent, we're going to be taking a look at reaction from both sides. It's another campaign promise President Joe Biden says he has now fulfilled. Look, people need help. The White House expected to tout the plan in the week ahead. With predictions, it could mean about 45% of student loan borrowers have their debt fully canceled. Those plumbers and electricians and police officers and teachers, this will help their children reach that American dream that they want. This is about America investing in people who work hard, who play by the rules, and who just need a government on their side. But not all Democrats are on board, with concerns about taxpayers footing the bill for some who need help and not others. People are getting crushed with inflation, crushed with gas prices, food prices, and all the rest. There's a lot of people out there making 30, 40 grand a year that didn't go to college, uh, and they need help as well. Some Republican attorneys general reportedly looking into options to challenge the plan in court, while other critics argue it will further strain the economy and even see it as a winning campaign issue, messaging it as Biden's bailout for rich kids. I spend my days releasing new political ads like this. Want to be a struggling artist? College is on me. I 
kids don't need fancy things like school supplies or new shoes. I work for you, theater major. This shift is for you, business major. Other critics argue at a time when the Federal Reserve is trying to cool down the economy and inflation, this could do the opposite. You don't slow the economy down by forgiving debt and giving people another $24 billion to spend that they would have been spending paying off the student debt that they borrowed. At a time, supporters say the White House plan delivers on the promise of forgiveness. Others now questioning its fairness. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, looking ahead, a special session of Idaho's legislature. It'll be held later this week. Now, Governor Little says its purpose is to help Idaho schools and Idaho families. The cost of the basic fundamentals to live every day have skyrocketed in just a matter of months. Right now, parents are sitting down at the kitchen table to go over what these unpredictable cost surges mean for their household budgets. Now, Governor Little wants lawmakers to focus on this one bill. Now, it would take from the state's budget surplus and give income tax rebates up to $600 for joint filers or 10% of their income, whichever is greater. And there'd also be a permanent lower flat income tax for both corporations and citizens set at 5.8%. Now, as for education, it would add another $410 million from sales tax. The special session will be this Thursday, September 1st. Well, a new survey from the Department of Energy says a number of factors, including the war in Ukraine, are causing fuel supplies to be lower than normal across the United States. Now, the agency says the situation most noticeable in the Northeast, where diesel and heating oil inventories are more than 50 percent below the recent average. That is raising a concern whether severe weather could cause supply disruptions. And again, not looking at any weather event at this time, but just keeping that in mind. Yeah, yeah. here at at least here at home, it is. Well, it was a beautiful weekend. I hope you guys all were able to get out, kind of enjoy nice. a little bit of that cool breeze moving nice through. Mid eighties, upper eighties, yeah. right? Yeah. 80s. yeah. Well, it's hot at times, though. I, that was yeah. one thing we were talking about before the show. It's still, yeah, the low eighties. We were still sweating a little bit. Still, yeah, <laughs> just a bit. So yeah. I think you know, I think we're all looking forward to uh, cooler weather. But yeah, our um, fingers are crossed, Marcos. Yes. But yeah, the seven day forecast, Mother Nature not letting up. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> four. Uh, four triple digit highs are projected for this week, Sarah. Uh, as you start as we start the week out but uh, looking at our uh, high for today this is that melting forecast if you plan on having ice cream today uh, 94 eat it fast it, it will melt pretty quick and looking at our satellite and radar things are looking pretty uh, pretty mild for the time being staying fairly dry we may have a system coming through the area uh, around Tuesday Wednesday but uh, no no precipitation for our area uh, whatsoever. Looking at our live shot right now, 60 degrees out there, calm winds. It's a, a nice cooler morning out there. Uh, that dew point uh, makes it feel like 60 degrees out there. So uh, nice mild start to your morning. Here's some a look at uh, here's a look at some of our current temperatures across the valley. 55 out in Nampa, and then obviously 60 here in Boise, 57 down in Mountain Home, 53 there, Glens Ferry, and then looking at that mountain region, 36 out in Stanley, 46 McCall, and then there's Baker City there at 45 degrees. We are gonna be getting into the mid 90s for this afternoon, 95 there, Mountain Home, 95 Emmett, and uh, mid 90s throughout the region. So hazy conditions, triple digits this week and that smoke will be sticking around. Taking a quick look at that extended forecast, 94 today, those four consecutive triple digit highs and then 98 by this weekend. Hazy conditions in the mountain region as well, but those highs staying in the 90s and then there's that little dip in the 80s, but staying in the 90s, folks. <laughs> And lots of time to cool down. Just want to stay close to maybe the air conditioner. Keep cool, friends. It is 521 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Still running along nice and smoothly on our main roads and secondary roads. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn the dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the FDA planning to approve another round of COVID booster shots. That's before human testing is complete. Why they say they believe the shots are still safe. Plus, reports of sea creatures biting people along the shoreline, what they are, and why officials say it's important to have them around.
Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. Welcome back. The latest round of coronavirus booster shots going to be released before human testing is fully complete. The Wall Street, Wall Street Journal reports the FDA is expected to approve the new booster shots sometime this week. Now, the boosters are modified from the current COVID vaccine to protect against the Omicron variant. The FDA commissioner says there's world evidence that the vaccines are safe and that strain changes can be made to them without affecting overall safety. Well, this next story, it may make your skin crawl. There are tiny sea creatures that are biting people along a shoreline in California, but these bad bugs are actually pretty useful. Now, Ariana Cohen talks with an ocean expert. So what are these creepy crawly sea creatures? I spoke with a marine biologist to find out more. Tara says she was walking along De Anza Cove when she decided to put her feet in the water. She didn't expect what came next. It was really painful, almost like, like, uh, like you got, I jumped out of the water, you know, and I'm an adult. I've had pain before, but this was just so shocking. And so it, there was like blood in little places all over my foot and in between my toes. She says in a matter of seconds, something bit her ankles and feet. And so I pulled my foot out, one of the feet, and there was like blood all over my foot. Like it was like small piranhas had bitten me. Tara says she rinsed her feet off and felt fine after 10 to 15 minutes. Still curious about the critters, Tara stuck her hand in the water today. Right away, a sea creature grabbed onto her finger. Ow, it's starting to bite me. But what is it that's in the water? Exerolana. Kincaidy. Professor of Oceanography at Scripps Institution, Ryan Heckinger, says they're crustaceans that are here year round. Those are isopods. That's what they're called. And this is a relative of roly polies that lives in the ocean in the very shallow waters. They are totally known to bite people. Uh, they really are, they hang out in the water and they're looking for, they like to eat fresh meat. He says movement is a good way to get them to scatter. My recommendation is for sure not to freak out. They're just little tiny pin pricks and they're super shallow. It's not like it's going deep or anything. And just, you know, the bugs you get out. He says you can still go for a swim, but be cautious and don't fret. <laughs> <laughs> we need these little creatures for the natural ecosystem. That they're nothing bad. They're part of the natural ecosystem. And uh, you might sometimes people like to ask, what use are they? Well, OK, you got a dead fish. They eat it up and remove it. So your beach doesn't stink like dead fish. Well, hey, yay for fish. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News, new evacuation orders here in Idaho, where the Four Corners fire is getting what the Four Corners fire is getting dangerously close to. And a look of what's coming up tonight on CBS2. And don't forget about our question of the day. Of course, we'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, a deadly shooting at an Oregon grocery store devastates the community. The investigation underway this morning. Plus, a federal judge may appoint a special master to look into the documents taken from Mar-a-Lago. How soon the U.S. government has to respond. Plus, NASA set to lift off this morning. A look at the mission to the moon now underway. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. You're taking a live look at the Kennedy Space Center where we are awaiting the launch of Artemis 1. Now, we are looking at this on Monday. Of course, it's the August 29th, 2022. Just about an hour is when we are expecting that to lift off. Now, NASA says the countdown to launch of its space launch system moon rocket is moving ahead this morning. We do have a launch, a little bit of a um, a, t a time issue with the launch. Of course, it's been pushed back about 40 minutes. That's what we know right now. There was an issue as engineers were getting things ready with a hydrogen link. It slowed things down this morning. It was the same area as a spring dress rehearsal um, that they had earlier. Though things do appear to potentially be on track, the rocket is the most powerful ever built by NASA, and forecasters are predicting about an 80% chance of acceptable weather for the opening launch window. Now, if today's launch does get scrubbed due to weather or those other reasons, NASA will try again.
on Friday. Now let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a first look at your forecast. Good morning, Marcos. And good morning, Sarah. We are going to be seeing uh, a warm up over the next several days here in the valley, uh, getting into the mid 90s for today and those triple digits this week. But here's our live shot right now. 60 degrees out there. It is a calm morning as you're getting ready to start your day. Looking at temperatures across the area, 57 there in Ontario, 55 out in Glens uh, Mountain Home and then uh, Burns there at 51 as well. Uh, getting into the mid 90s this afternoon, 95 down in Mountain Home, 95 out in Emmett and then looking at that mountain Mountain region 90 Idaho City and 86 McCall so gonna see some warmer temperatures about five degrees warmer than average gonna continue to monitor that's uh, surface smoke forecast we are in a uh, I believe it's yellow category for this uh, afternoon but uh, things are gonna be hazy in the valley for this afternoon and then what to expect 90s for today those hazy conditions triple digits this week and that smoke will be sticking around Sarah Thank you, Marcos. It is 532 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning. No reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we do begin in Oregon this morning where deadly gunfire broke out at a supermarket in Bend, Oregon last night, leaving two people dead. It was loud enough to make me and three other employees ran into a walk-in refrigerator and closed the door and stayed there. We stayed hidden wow. until the authorities arrived. People were running out of Safeway and I mean the police were here though in a matter of like five seconds of that happening. Now several people called 911 from the shopping center. Police say the shooter was later found dead inside. Officers responded and when they arrived, they entered the Safeway immediately, still hearing shots. They found the apparent shooter dead inside Safeway. Officers say they found an AR-15 style rifle and a shotgun near the shooter's body. Now authorities are investigating a motive. We will bring you the latest on the investigation as it develops this morning. Well, two Phoenix police officers, they've been injured in a shooting just north of Phoenix. Now, police say the officers, they were responding to reports of a shooting nearby. Now, both officers are being treated at the hospital this morning. Officials say they're in stable condition. No suspect has been identified and what led up to the shooting is still under investigation. Well, in Texas, a man set fire to a residential complex over the weekend in Houston, and police say he did it to lure people out and then shoot them as they escaped the flames. Now, four people were killed, including that gunman. He was shot by police once they arrived. Now, the property owner says that suspect was recently evicted. I come out and there's a body laying here and a body laying over here. And, and then when I pulled my car over around there, there's a body laying over here. It's very crazy. Yeah, it's brutal murder. I mean, the guy lost his head, I guess. I don't know. Neighbors say they're still searching for the manager's dog, Duke, who was also shot in the chaos. New developments this morning. Well, major new developments into the fight over allegedly classified documents found at the resident of former President Trump. Now, national correspondent Christine Frizzau brings us up to speed. The week ahead brings with it new deadlines and new questions about the heavily redacted affidavit released by a federal judge. The justifications for the search of a former president's residence. And that will be my charge. The director of national intelligence reportedly telling lawmakers intelligence officials are now conducting a national security review on the documents collected by the FBI. 184 bearing classification markings, including 67 documents marked as confidential, 92 marked as secret, and 25 marked as top secret. The purpose of this review is simply to understand the worst case scenario. What could happen? What technologies, what human sources, what capabilities, what intelligence collection access points might be lost. But in what is widely viewed as a win for former President Trump, federal judge Eileen Cannon has granted preliminary intent to appoint a quote special master in the case, giving both sides until Tuesday to respond with a hearing scheduled for this Thursday. Well, my father-in-law has called for from the very beginning, and I think all the American people want is fairness and transparency. And it looks like a political attack on Donald Trump, a man who may be the opponent against the Democrats in 2024. Critics also questioning the timing of the search. 
This has been a year and a half in the making. Right? The for, former President Trump has been out of office for going on two years now. Where, why? We think this is a coincidence just happening a few months before the midterm elections. What I wonder about is why this could go on for almost two years and less than 100 days before the election. Suddenly we're talking about this rather than the economy. Republicans in both chambers adding what they call the Trump raid to incidents they'll investigate themselves if they take the majority in November. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Turning to Ukraine this morning, new video showing new attacks near Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Here's a look. Now, both Russia and Ukraine are claiming the other country is to blame. The plant controlled by Russian forces, but operated by Ukrainian engineers. Now, international experts say the latest shelling underscoring the risk of nuclear catastrophe. Well, now inspectors say they're on their way to the Zaporizhia power plant. They're worried the war in Ukraine could cause an accident. The International Atomic Energy Agency says their goal during the visit is to make sure the Ukrainian nuclear facility is both safe and secure. Now, international leaders are afraid of a disaster like Chernobyl back in the 1980s. Well, turning now to fire season, new evacuation orders on the Four Corners fire. That's burning near Lake Cascade on the west side. That fire grew by more than 1,000 acres over the weekend thanks to winds over 30 miles an hour. That fire is now most active on both the south and east sides. So Valley County has ordered home evacuations on West Mountain from Campbell Creek South to Raspberry Road. The staging area for all evacuees is Kelly's Whitewater Park. And that same weather front also increasing fire activity on the Moose Fire that's burning north of Salmon. The winds died down. They were up to 40 miles an hour at times. Now, so far this fire season, about 123,000 acres have burned here in Idaho. The vast majority of those acres have come from the Moose Fire, which is just under 97,000 acres. Yeah, those winds really not helping the situation. I know it you know, brought a little bit of some cool air into our region, but yeah, we need to be thinking about some of those fires up to the north. And I know that the temperatures aren't letting up for us here, of course, to the north. What's it looking like for them yeah, heading into uh, the work week? Uh, uh, the mountain region is going to be staying in the 80s, 90s this week, um, but I think they'll be seeing a little cool down near the end of the week, but still in the 90s as well okay. in the uh, uh, mountain region. But and that smoke forecast uh, going to be seeing hazy conditions here in the valley as well. So as those fires continue to burn, Sarah, but yeah. here's a look at that hourly forecast for this afternoon, uh, getting into the 90s there, mid 90s for today. We are going to see some partly cloudy conditions, but uh, sunny by this afternoon. There's a 92 uh, by 7 p.m. and getting to the mid 90s by 6 p.m. So back to school, um, the bus stop forecast for this morning. Uh, nice and uh, chilly conditions this morning, 60 degrees, and then getting into the 90s as the kids get home from school. So uh, it is going to be another warm day here in the valley. And looking at our current temperatures uh, across the valley, 55 there out in Nampa, and then elsewhere, nice and mild, 55 Glens Ferry, 57 there, Mountain Home, and then Nampa there at 55 as well. So going to show you our temperature trends over the past couple of days. We have been above normal uh, for the past few weeks, it seems. The past couple of days, we have seen near normal temperatures, right, with that 86 and that 84 over the weekend. But we are going to be returning to those triple digits this week. Here's a look at our highs for this afternoon. 95 there, Boise, 94 out in Nampa, and then 93 out in Caldwell. So nice mid-90s uh, across the board. And then there's a look at that dog walking forecast, 58 to 62 this morning. Clear, it is going to be warming up, folks, and that sunrise, 7.05 a.m. Sarah? Thank you, Marcos. Not a bad start to our morning. 540, by the way, on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring a team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. It is looking good. Rolling on along. It's what we like to see. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is... In a new poll, 21% of Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. What are you thinking, Marcos? No, I'm not with, uh, honest. Oh, honest. Yeah. Okay. Honest. I was thinking maybe it's just because it's the morning, but I was thinking like a, a, an early riser. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like there's less than us night owls maybe out there. 
I guess we're kind of turning into early risers. Now. Early right, yeah. <laughs> All right, Doug says generous. Yeah, love yeah. that. Let's, say, let's see so, what else we have there at home. Again, just 21% of Barry. Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. Barry says caring. Always good to be caring yeah, of other no. people. So I love it. Ed, <laughs> constantly <laughs> always online. Yeah, I was going to say, we know a couple of those, Des definitely. <laughs> that describes my life, Sarah, so. <laughs> nope, you're not alone. All right, well, if you think you know the answer, you still have about an hour and 15 minutes to keep on guessing. You can do that both on our Facebook page or our Twitter. And, of course, we'll read more of your guesses and reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more southern U.S. states preparing for massive flooding. The damage they're expected to deal with. Taking a look at your local forecast in Glens Ferry this afternoon, 96 and sunny. Clear skies tonight and tomorrow, those triple digits kicking in at 101. Thank you, Marcos. Well, Mississippi bracing for some significant floods. The Pearl River near Jackson is expected to crest today, and parts of other states are at risk of flooding as well. Now, Amy Kiley has the details. The sandbags are down in Jackson, Mississippi. At least 100 homes are at risk as floodwaters rise. Pearl River is forecast to crest today at 35.5 feet. During breaks in the days of rain, some residents left town. We're going to get out of here for safety. We've got a truck loaded up. This my car is stuck. Can't drive. It's too low. Many who live here remember the punishing floods of 2020. The whole house was damaged. Uh, we had to gut it inside. All of the walls had to be out. Uh, we lost everything. Other areas of Mississippi could flood and even parts of neighboring states. We're looking at showers and thunderstorms, increasing the flood threat across portions of Texas, southern Louisiana, and a good portion of Florida. The water cycle that we learned in seventh grade is, is completely unpredictable now. Climate scientists warn the latest droughts and floods in the U.S. and other parts of the world won't be the last. We've built major cities next to these waters of water, and we've built modern supply chains based on predictable weather patterns of the last, you know, couple hundred years, and all of that is up in the air right now. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, the death toll continuing to rise in Pakistan, where monsoon rains and flooding have killed more than 1,000 people, including more than 350 children. Now, the Pakistani army is helping with relief and rescue operations as the government is calling for international aid. Now, the country is experiencing, experiencing its eighth cycle of monsoon rains. Now, normally, Pakistan only has about three to four cycles of rain each year. At least 33 million people have been affected by that flooding. Well, closer to home, the Rum Creek Fire near Galice, Oregon, is spreading rapidly. Now, fire officials say the fire, that's grown more than 3,000 acres in size over the weekend, prompting several level three evacuations. So our firefighters are going in there and prepping homes. We're um, looking at water sources. We're um, scouting roads to make sure fire engines can get in and out. And then we're also helping up with mopping up and cleaning up in areas. Josephine County Public Health and the Red Cross are providing shelter for those forced to leave their homes. Now, so far, the Rum Creek Fire has burned more than 4,300 acres and is sitting at 0% containment. The next four months, from September to December, bring about some of the strongest Santa Ana winds. Now, some neighbors in California are getting ready to leave their homes in the case of a worst scenario event. But officials, they worry not all neighbors may be prepared. Now, with brush around homes still so dry, they're sharing a blunt reminder. Fire doesn't care how much money you make uh, or the title at your position at your work. It only wants two things, fuel and oxygen. And if your house is standing in the way of that fuel source, it's going to eat it up. Now, if you do ever find yourself in a situation where you need to evacuate, fire officials say think of the six P's. That's people, pets, important papers, prescriptions, pictures, personal computers, and plastic, as in your ATM or credit cards. You know, a good reminder to always have a go bag 
just on hand no matter what. I mean, I know that my family, we don't you know, normally live close to those fire areas, mm -hmm. but it's always good to prepare ahead of time and have those things ready. So if that event does happen, you do live close to fire, you know, you're ready to go. Yeah, I can imagine being in that situation though, Sarah. I, I know, mean, my yeah. heart goes out to all of their families. Especially, yeah. Yeah, no, and we're, we're also keeping, of course, updates up on the Four Corners fire. That's the newest evacuation orders as of this morning. And those winds were moving through the area um, over the weekend. Of course, that did bring a cool breeze to us, yeah. but kind of helped move some of that activity on those fires. Yeah. So as far as winds, what are we looking at? Uh, I'm going to stay uh, fairly uh, windy in certain areas, but mm -hmm. I think what the, we're going to be seeing more is like the, the hotter temperatures. Yeah. Um, over the next several days. <laughs> yeah, heating up once yeah. again. Yeah, you want to grab that ice cream cone today. It'll melt yeah, quick. That today's for, uh, forecast, 94 degrees. It is going to be warming up. And then uh, uh, talking about the uh, uh, what we could expect over the next several days, staying fairly dry here in the area, really not much uh, activity going on. Uh, may see a system pass through the area around Wednesday, but no precipitation is uh, forecasted to uh, come through the area around that time. So here's a look right now. Calm winds out there, uh, 60 degrees. That dew point makes it feel like 60 degrees out there. So a nice mild start to your morning. Here's some of our current temperatures this afternoon or this morning, 60 there in Meridian, 55 out in Nampa. There's Parma there at 55 as well. And looking at the mountain region, 36 Stanley, 46 out in McCall, and then Ontario there at 57 degrees as well. We are going to be getting into the mid 90s for this afternoon, folks. Uh, about 95 across the board there, 93 out in Caldwell, uh, 94 there in Nampa, and then the mountain region there, Idaho City, 90, 86 out in McCall, and then there's Stanley at 83 degrees. So a quick rundown of what to expect. 90s for today, hazy conditions, those triple digits this week, and that smoke will be sticking around, folks. Uh, looking at our forecast, triple digit highs for the next several days, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It is going to be very hot on Wednesday and on Friday. 98 there by the weekend. That's sunshine sticking around for the week, though. And then hazy conditions in the mountain region, 85 there, a 91 by Tuesday and 90s throughout the rest of the week. See a little dip there on Saturday, but that sunshine sticking around. Thank you, Marcos. It is 550 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. A few more headlights, but no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a night filled with music, a look at the MTV Video Award Music Awards and some of its biggest announcements. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5.53. Welcome back. The MTV Midi Video Music Awards. They were held last night at Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. It was a night filled with new music and some old favorites, too. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the VMA's recap. To kick off the 2022 MTV VMAs, it was a throwback to 2006. Fergie starting the show with her hit Glamorous, sampled this year by rapper Jack Harlow. Harlow's song First Class won the award for Song of the Summer. Thank you to Fergie for coming out with me tonight and clearing this song. It was a night packed with big performances from Lizzo to Eminem and Snoop Dogg in the metaverse to Artist of the Year winner Bad Bunny performing at Yankee Stadium. After the verdict in his defamation trial, Johnny Depp appeared several times as MTV's iconic Moon Man, saying he needs the work. I just want you guys to know that I'm available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings, wakes, any old thing you need. As for the big wins, Taylor Swift took the top prize video of the year for All Too Well, the short film, and she shared some news with fans. I thought it might be a fun moment to tell you that... that my brand new album comes out October 21st. 
and Harry Styles will bring home the Album of the Year award back to Harry's house. Um, he accepted from his concert fun. stage in New York. I would like to say thank you to all of my fans who voted. Thank you so, so much. Madonna was nominated for her recent album, her 69th VMA nomination. She's the only artist nominated in each of the VMA's five decades. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Now, Nicki Minaj also had a big night, not only hosting, but performing and winning awards. She did a medley of some of her biggest hits and received the Video Vanguard Award, which honors her lifetime achievements. Well, if you've ever been meaning to catch some of the latest blockbuster releases in theaters, you're in luck. Movie tickets at some theaters will be just $3, but it's only for one day. Now, a group representing more than 3,000 U.S. movie theaters, they announced that this Saturday only, ticket prices will be discounted on more than 30,000 screens to no more than $3 a pop. Now, major chains, including AMC, our own Regal Cinemas, and all major studios are taking part. Labor Day weekend is traditionally one of the slowest weekends for the silver screens. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, new evacuation orders here in Idaho, where the Four Corners fire is getting dangerously close to. Plus, the governor said to hold a special session later this week, how he's hoping to help Idahoans through inflation. Now, of course, we will have your latest headlines coming up at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a deadly shooting at an Oregon grocery store devastates the community. The investigation underway this morning. Plus, a federal judge may appoint a special master to look at the documents taken from Mar-a-Lago, how soon the U.S. government has to respond. Plus, NASA set to lift off this morning, a look at the mission to the moon now underway. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Monday, August 29th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Now it was a beautiful weekend with a little bit cooler temperatures. I was loving that Marcos, but Mother Nature cranking the heat once again this week. Temperatures though right now sitting pretty nice out there. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, we had a nice uh, break there over the weekend. Uh, mid 80s, upper 80s this weekend, but Back into the 90s for this week, folks. Let's start out by taking a look at our live shot uh, right outside our station. 59 degrees feels like 59 degrees out there and looking at temperatures across the valley. 53, uh, 59 Boise, 43 Idaho City and then 53 down in Mountain Home. There's Ontario at 46 and Weezer at 61 degrees. Staying in the mid 90s for this afternoon there, 95 Boise, 95 out in Emmett and then there's Napa Caldwell at 93, 90 94 and Ontario there at 96 degrees. Now, I'm going to talk real quick about the surface smoke forecast. We are going to see some hazy conditions uh, in the Boise, uh, in the Treasure Valley. Of course, most of that staying in the mountain region where those fires are currently happening. But overall, we're going to see hazy conditions here in the valley. Quick look at what to expect. 90s today, those hazy conditions, triple digits making a return this week, and that smoke sticking around. Sarah? Thank you, Marcos. It is 601 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good as people are starting their morning out there. Of course, live look at I-84. We're not seeing any reports of anything slowing you down, both on that and our secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM 
for more team traffic updates. And we do begin in Oregon this morning where a deadly gunfire broke out at a supermarket in Bend, Oregon last night, leaving two people dead. It was loud enough to make me and three other employees ran into a walk in refrigerator and closed the door and stayed there. We stayed hidden until the authorities arrived. People were running out of Safeway and I mean the police were here though in a matter of like five seconds of that happening. Several people called 911 from the shopping center. Now police say the shooter was later found dead inside. Officers responded and when they arrived they entered the Safeway immediately still hearing shots. They found the apparent shooter dead inside Safeway. Officers say they found an AR-15 style rifle and a shotgun near the shooter's body. Now authorities are investigating a motive. We will bring you the latest on the investigation as it develops this morning. Well, a man set fire to a residential complex in Houston over the weekend. Now police say he did it to lure people out and then shoot them as they escaped the flames. Now four people were killed, including the gunman. He was shot by police once they arrived on scene. The property owner says the suspect was recently evicted. I come out and there's a body laying here and a body laying over here. And and then when I pulled my car over around there, there's a body laying over here. It is very crazy. Yeah, it's brutal murder. I mean, the guy lost his head, I guess. I don't know. Neighbors say they're still searching for the manager's three year old dog who was also shot in the chaos. Well, to developing news this morning, a federal judge in Florida says she preliminarily intends to appoint a special master to the case involving classified records the FBI removed from former President Trump's Florida estate. Now, the heavily redacted affidavit that was released on Friday says the FBI, they found 184 classified documents in January and more than two dozen marked top secret. Now, Trump's lawyers are requesting a special master to independently review those records and determine if anything needs to be returned to Trump. On the one hand, it could be, uh, as some Republicans think, just a, 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 you know, just a, a political witch hunt. On the other hand, it could be really serious, you know, federal felonies Where that do we don't come know down about on that? The U.S. government has until Tuesday to file a response. Now, the judge is scheduling a hearing to consider whether to grant Trump's request for a special master. That's on Thursday. Well, turning to Ukraine this morning, new video showing new attacks near Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Take a look. Now, both Russia and Ukraine are claiming that the other country is to blame. The plant is controlled by Russian forces, but operated by Ukrainian engineers. Now, the international experts, they say the latest shelling underscores the risk of nuclear catastrophe. Well, now inspectors say they're on their way this morning to Zaporizhia power plant. They're worried that the war in Ukraine could cause an accident. The International Atomic Energy Agency says the goal during the visit is to make sure the Ukrainian nuclear facility is both safe and secure. Happening this morning, all eyes on Launchpad 39B at Kennedy Space Center this morning as NASA is kicking off the start to its program to get back to the moon for the first time in 50 years. But engineers did have to overcome an issue during the fueling process. Skylar Henry is at the Space Center with the latest on Artemis 1 launch. The countdown was on for NASA's new moon rocket until a hydrogen leak this morning slowed things down. The issue appeared in the same area during a dress rehearsal in the spring. Jeremy Parsons is on the team in charge of sending the rocket and Orion capsule on a more than one month journey. I've always wanted to be a part of going back to the moon. And this is that first big step. The $4 billion unpiloted mission is a bit of a test run, going beyond the far side of the moon before returning to Earth's orbit, splashing into the Pacific, traveling a total of more than 1.3 million miles. But you're testing it to its limits to make sure that these things are capable to do what y'all are designing it to do? At every level, right down to the smallest piece, we test, we test, we test again. Then when we've integrated it together, we test once more. The mission kicks off NASA's hope of getting people back on the moon to its South Pole as early as 2025. When you build a spacecraft, you can't take any chances, certainly not when you're building a human-rated spacecraft. Setting the stage for future human exploration into deep space and possibly a landing on Mars. Skyler Henry, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. And right now, the countdown timer, it's stuck at T-minus 40 minutes from launch. Now, if today's launch does get scrubbed due to weather or other reasons, NASA will try again on Friday. Well, turning to fire season this morning, new evacuation orders on the Four Corners fire 
that's burning west of Lake Cascade. That fire growing by more than a thousand acres over the weekend. That's thanks to winds at sometimes over 30 miles an hour. That fire is most active on the south and east sides. So the Valley County Sheriff has ordered homes evacuated on the West Mountain. That's from Campbell Creek South to Raspberry Road. The staging area for all evacuees is Kelly's Whitewater Park. We have more information on our website. And that same weather front also increased fire activity on the Moose Fire. That's the one burning north of Salmon. Though winds died down, they were up to 40 miles an hour at some points. So far this fire season, around 123,000 acres have burned here in Idaho. A vast majority of those acres coming from the Moose Fire, which is just under 97,000 acres. All right, Marcos, it is going to be another toasty week, so keep that in mind. But it's the second week of school for a lot of kids heading back to the classroom, and it's feeling really nice if you're stepping out early yeah, this morning. Nice chilly morning, right? I noticed that this morning as I was coming into work, but uh, yeah, nice. Uh, I think we're 60 degrees right now. Good. Uh, yeah. Gonna see that warm up though, getting into the mid 90s for today, and then we have a series of triple digit highs over the next few days, folks. Here's a look at that hourly forecast. 90 there by 3 p.m., 92 and then 93 by 5 p.m., getting into about 94, 95 for this afternoon before we cool things down for the night. Here's a look at that bus stop forecast. Uh, 60 degrees this morning as you're getting the kids ready for school and then into the 90s this afternoon when they get back from school. So uh, it is going to be a little warm out there this afternoon. Here's a look at those uh, current temperatures there. 60 Meridian, 48 down in CUNA, and then looking across the valley, 54 Nampa, and then 56 out in Ontario. There's 47 up, up in McCall and then 34 Stanley. So nice cool temperatures for this time of year. Looking at our temperature history, uh, we did manage to stay near normal or a about normal Saturday and Sunday. Those past couple days though, we have been above normal and we're gonna get into those triple digit highs uh, throughout the next several days. But here's a look at those highs for today, 90 out in Idaho City, 95 down in Mountain Home, and then 94 out in Nampa. Looking at your dog walking forecast, if you plan to take your four uh, legged friend out for a walk this morning, gonna be in the uh, 60s for this morning, clear. We are expecting that warm up and that sunrise 705. Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 609 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien for your first look. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? We are doing okay with the drive at this stage early on. Uh, very quiet. Usually starts off pretty calm this time of the morning. Traffic volumes, as you can see, are pretty light in those four looks and elsewhere as well. Doing great. The closure continues this week on Cherry Lane between McDermott and Black Cat. Barricades up. No through traffic there. That works scheduled to go for about another week. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, this Wednesday marks the beginning of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. CBS2 proud to be the official TV home for the event. We've teamed up with CapEd Credit Union and Town Square Media. Now, it's something radio host Kevin Miller says people look forward to all year long. You know, it's amazing that you have people from all over the country, all over the world, come to Boise, Idaho to experience balloons. And for those new to the area, the event kicks off with CapEd Kids Day. That's when kids get to go up in tethered balloons. Now the event, it continues all the way through Sunday with hot air balloons taking flight each morning from Ann Morrison Park. People in Idaho love balloons. It makes us all feel like we're little kids. And whether you're a little kid genuinely or kid at heart, this is an event you don't want to miss. And Friday evening, it's an extra special event as the Night Glow Spectacular. It'll take place. That's where the balloons are lit up after dark. You can get up close and personal. For Kevin Miller and others, it's a must-see event. If you want to be a part of the community or you are a part of the community, why not join us once again? Yep, we'll be there all week long, so come down and say hi. You can learn more about the Spirit of Boise or to see photos from years past, just head on down to IdahoNews.com. And straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, the White House set today to push their student loan forgiveness plan. Why some aren't on board. Plus, the governor holding a special session later this week how he's hoping to help Idahoans through inflation. 
And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Get this, 80% of today's kids, they don't recognize this item that was common in classrooms about 25 years ago. That answer is an overhead projector. Yeah, kind of blows your mind. All right, well, for today's question, in a new poll, only 21% of Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Cascade today. Smoky conditions with a high of 87 tonight. That smoke continuing with a low of 45 and by tomorrow a high of 91 with hazy conditions. Thank you, Marcos. It is 615 on your Monday this morning. The White House continuing to make the case its student loan plan will be good for not only Americans, but for the economy. Now, the plan implemented by the Biden administration, it forgives federal loan debt up to $10,000 for people making less than $125,000 a year, plus 27 million Americans with Pell Grants, typically given to those from low income families, they'll be forgiven up to $20,000. Now, national correspondent Christine Frazau has reaction from both sides. It's another campaign promise President Joe Biden says he has now fulfilled. Look, people need help. The White House expected to tout the plan in the week ahead. With predictions, it could mean about 45% of student loan borrowers have their debt fully canceled. Those plumbers and electricians and police officers and teachers, this will help their children reach that American dream that they want. This is about America investing in people who work hard, who play by the rules, and who just need a government on their side. But not all Democrats are on board, with concerns about taxpayers footing the bill for some who need help and not others. People are getting crushed with inflation, crushed with gas prices, food prices, and all the rest. There's a lot of people out there making 30, 40 grand a year that didn't go to college, uh, and they need help as well. Some Republican attorneys general reportedly looking into options to challenge the plan in court, while other critics argue it will further strain the economy and even see it as a winning campaign issue, messaging it as Biden's bailout for rich kids. I spend my days releasing new political ads like this. Want to be a struggling artist? College is on me. My kids don't need fancy things like school supplies or new shoes. I work for you, theater major. This shift is for you, business major. Other critics argue at a time when the Federal Reserve is trying to cool down the economy and inflation, this could do the opposite. You don't slow the economy down by forgiving debt and giving people another $24 billion to spend that they would have been spending paying off the student debt that they borrowed. At a time supporters say the White House plan delivers on the promise of forgiveness. Others now questioning its fairness. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, here at home, looking ahead to a special session of the Idaho legislature, it'll be held later this week. Governor Little saying its purpose to help not only Idaho schools, but Idaho families. The cost of the basic fundamentals to live every day have skyrocketed in just a matter of months. Right now, parents are sitting down at the kitchen table to go over what these unpredictable cost surges mean for their household budgets. Governor Little wants lawmakers to focus on one bill. It would take from the state's budget surplus and give income tax rebates up to $600 for joint filers or 10% of their income, whichever of the two is greater. And there'd be a permanent lower flat income tax for both corporations and citizens at 5.8%. Now, as for education, it would add another $410 million from sales taxes. The special session, it'll be this Thursday, September 1st. All right, Marcos, it is a great start to the morning. It's kind of getting me excited for the start of fall. I know yeah. I say that very, very slowly because I know a lot of people still loving summer. And if you do, yeah, Mother Nature cranking up the heat once again. <laughs> yeah, uh, warming up uh, today. Today won't be so bad, though. Mid 90s tomorrow, though, those triple digits kicking in. And we are expected to see uh, three to four days of those triple digit highs, Sarah. So I'll have the full forecast here shortly. But for today, 94 degrees and warm. So eat that ice cream fast if you are going to be out uh, having some ice cream today. Looking at our satellite and radar, things are looking 
fairly dry for the next several days. Uh, we are expected to see a system come through, but no rain on our end. So things are going to be staying um, fairly dry for the most part. And then looking at our live uh, shot right now, 59 degrees south winds at five miles an hour. So it's going to be a nice cool start to your Monday morning as you're getting ready to start your day or getting the kids ready for school. There's a uh, 60 out in Meridian and then 59 here, Boise, 52 out in Nampa and then 57 down in Mountain Home for friends down in Mountain Home. These are a look at some of our highs for today. 95 across the board, 94 there out in Nampa, 93 Caldwell, and then 86 McCall, and then 83 out in Stanley. So a quick uh, rundown of what to expect this week. 90s today, those hazy conditions getting very warm this week, but that smoke sticking around folks. Here's that extended forecast 94 today. Those triple digit highs throughout the next four days. 103 there Wednesday, 103 Friday, and then highs in the upper 90s by Saturday. A quick look at that mountain forecast. Hazy conditions for the next couple days. Sunny highs in the 90s. A little dip there on Saturday and then back into the 90s by Sunday. Sarah. No, oh, thank you, Marcos. Yeah, get ready for a hot one. It is 621 on your Monday, though. Nice little cool start to the day. CBS 2 News and News.KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hi, Ron. How's it looking out there? We're still doing okay with the drive. I-84 east and west of Boise. Nothing really kicking in quite yet. Volume's not that heavy. And a good start to even major routes like Eagle Road or Fairview away from the freeways. The work continues. Highway 2026 around Highway 16. Reduced speed limit in that area, and it is down to one lane each direction using one side of the highway. So you got to watch out there on 2026, part of that Highway 16 extension work. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the FDA planning to approve another round of COVID booster shots before human testing is fully complete. Why they say they still believe the shots are safe. Plus, reports of sea creatures biting people along a shoreline, what they are and why officials say it's important to have them around. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624. Welcome back. The latest round of coronavirus booster shots. They're going to be released before human testing is fully complete. And the Wall Street Journal reports the FDA is expected to approve the new booster shots as soon as this week. Now, those boosters are modified from the current COVID vaccine to help protect against the Omicron variant. The FDA commissioner says there's world evidence that the vaccines are safe and the strain changes can be made to them without affecting safety. Well, this next story, it may make your skin crawl. Tiny sea creatures, they're biting people along the shoreline, but we're finding that these bad bugs are actually pretty useful. Now, Ariana Cohen talks with an ocean expert. So what are these creepy crawly sea creatures? I spoke with a marine biologist to find out more. Tara says she was walking along De Anza Cove when she decided to put her feet in the water. She didn't expect what came next. It was really painful, almost like, like, uh, like you got, I jumped out of the water, you know, and I'm an adult. I've had pain before, but this was just so shocking. And so it, there was like blood in little places all over my foot and in between my toes. She says in a matter of seconds, something bit her ankles and feet. And so I pulled my foot out, one of the feet, and there was like blood all over my foot. Like it was like small piranhas had bitten me. Tara says she rinsed her feet off and felt fine after 10 to 15 minutes. Still curious about the critters, Tara stuck her hand in the water today. Right away, a sea creature grabbed onto her finger. Ow, it's starting to bite me. But what is it that's in the water? Exerolana. Kincaidy. Professor of Oceanography at Scripps Institution, Ryan Heckinger, says they're crustaceans that are here year round. Those are isopods. That's what they're called. And this is a relative of roly polies that lives in the ocean in the very shallow waters. They are totally known to bite people. Uh, they really are, they hang out in the water and they're looking for, they like to eat fresh meat. He says movement is a good way to get them to scatter. My recommendation is for sure not to freak out. They're just little tiny pinpricks and they're super shallow. It's not like it's going deep or anything. And 
just, you know, if it bugs you, get out. He says you can still go for a swim, but be cautious and don't fret. <laughs> <laughs> we need these little creatures for the natural ecosystem. That they're nothing bad. They're part of the natural ecosystem. And uh, you might sometimes people like to ask, what use are they? Well, OK, you got a dead fish. They eat it up and remove it. So your beach doesn't stink like dead fish. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, new evacuation orders here in Idaho, where the Four Corners fire is getting dangerously close. And a look at your question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a deadly shooting at an Oregon grocery store devastates the community. The investigation underway this morning. Plus, a federal judge may appoint a special master to look into the documents taken from Mar-a-Lago. How soon the U.S. government has to respond. Plus, NASA set to lift off this morning. A look at the mission to the moon now underway. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sarah Jacobson. You're taking a live look at the Kennedy Space Center this morning on this Monday, August 29th, 2022. The Artemis rocket was expected to lift off right about now, but delays. They're slowing things down. You are taking a live look right now. According to a statement from NASA on Twitter, that launch currently in an unplanned hold as the team working to or they're working on issues with one of the engines. There was also an issue as engineers were getting things ready. A hydrogen leak. Now the leak, it appeared in the same area as a dress rehearsal back in the spring. Now right now the countdown is sitting at around T minus 40 minutes. The rocket is the most powerful ever built by NASA. Forecasters are predicting an 80% chance of acceptable weather at the opening of the launch window. Now if today's launch does get scrubbed due to those other reasons, NASA will try again on Friday. Well, let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a first look at your forecast. And Marcos, a beautiful start to our Monday morning. That's right, Sarah. A beautiful start to our Monday morning. We're about uh, 35 minutes away from our uh, sunrise. Here's a look at our current temperature there. 59 degrees south winds at five miles an hour, and it's going to be another warm day, folks. Here's a look at some current temperatures. 56 out in Ontario. 59 here, Boise, Idaho City there at 52, and then out in McCall, 47 degrees. So here's a look at those highs for today. 95 out in Mountain Home, 90 there in Idaho City, Stanley at 83, and McCall there at 86 degrees. So mid-90s across the board for, for the valley. So we are expected to see those triple digits arrive by tomorrow once again. Looking at our smoke forecast, uh, we're going to see some hazy conditions here in the valley. And of course, most of that going to be staying in the mountain region where the majority of those fires are. So a quick rundown of what to expect. Hazy today, triple digits this week, and that smoke will be sticking around with those 90s. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 632 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. It is running along smoothly. A few more headlights and volumes will be up as we continue to head into the 7 o'clock hour. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, we begin in Oregon this morning where deadly gunfire broke out at a supermarket in Bend. It was last night, leaving two people dead. It was loud enough to make me and three other employees ran into a walk-in refrigerator and closed the door and stayed there. We stayed hidden until the authorities arrived. People were running out of Safeway and I mean, the police were here though in a matter of like five seconds of that happening. Several people called 911 from the shopping center. Now, police say the shooter was later found dead inside. Officers responded, and when they arrived, they entered the Safeway immediately, still hearing shots. They found the apparent shooter dead inside Safeway. Officers say they found an AR-15 style rifle and a shotgun near the shooter's body. Authorities, they're investigating a motive, and we will bring you the latest on this investigation as it develops later this morning. Well, a man set fire to a residential complex in Houston over the weekend. Police say he did it to lure people out and shoot them as they escaped the flames. Four people were killed, including that gunman. He was shot by police once they arrived on scene. The property owner says that suspect was recently evicted. 
I come out and there's a body laying here and a body laying over here. And and then when I pulled my car over around there, there's a body laying over here. It's very crazy. Yeah, it's brutal murder. I mean, the guy lost his head, I guess. I don't know. Neighbors say they're still searching for the manager's three-year-old dog who was also shot in the chaos. Well, major new developments in the fight over allegedly classified documents found at the resident of former President Trump. Our national correspondent Christine Frizzau brings us up to speed. The week ahead brings with it new deadlines and new questions about the heavily redacted affidavit released by a federal judge. The justifications for the search of a former president's residence. And that will be my charge. The director of national intelligence reportedly telling lawmakers intelligence officials are now conducting a national security review on the documents collected by the FBI. 184 bearing classification markings, including 67 documents marked as confidential, 92 marked as secret, and 25 marked as top secret. The purpose of this review is simply to understand the worst case scenario. What could happen? What technologies, what human sources, what capabilities, what intelligence collection access points might be lost. But in what is widely viewed as a win for former President Trump, federal judge Eileen Cannon has granted preliminary intent to appoint a quote special master in the case, giving both sides until Tuesday to respond with a hearing scheduled for this Thursday. Well, my father-in-law has called for from the very beginning and I think all the American people want is fairness and transparency and it looks like a political attack on Donald Trump, a man who may be the opponent against the Democrats in 2024. Critics also questioning the timing of the search. This has been a year and a half in the making, right? The for former President Trump has been out of office for going on two years now. Where, why, I think this is a coincidence just happening a few months before the midterm elections. What I wonder about is why this could go on for almost two years and less than 100 days before the election, suddenly we're talking about this rather than the economy. Republicans in both chambers adding what they call the Trump raid to incidents they'll investigate themselves if they take the majority in November. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Turning to Ukraine this morning, new video showing new attacks near Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Here's a look. Now both Russia and Ukraine are claiming the other country is to blame. That plant controlled by Russian forces, but operated by Ukrainian engineers. Now, international experts say the latest shelling, it underscores the risk of a nuclear catastrophe. And now inspectors, they say they're on their way to Zaporizhia power plant. They're worried the war in Ukraine could cause an accident. The International Atomic Energy Agency says their goal during the visit is making sure the Ukrainian nuclear facility is not only safe, but secure. Well, turning to fire season this morning, new evacuation orders on the Four Corners fire that's burning on the west side of Lake Cascade. Now, fire crews say they, the fire grew by more than a thousand acres over the weekend. That's thanks to winds over 30 miles an hour. The fire is most active on both the south and eastern sides. So the Valley County Sheriff has ordered homes evacuated on West Mountain. That's from Campbell Creek South to Raspberry Road. The staging area for all evacuees is Kelly's Whitewater Park. And that same weather front also increased fire activity on the Moose Fire. That's north of Salmon. Though winds did die down, they were up to 40 miles an hour at some points. Now, so far this fire season, more than 123,000 acres have burned in Idaho. And the vast majority of those acres have come from the Moose Fire, which is just under 97,000 acres. Well, Marcos, it was a beautiful weekend. We're kicking it off with a nice morning as you're stepping out the door. But of course, today a little cooler, but we're going to be cranking up the heat in the coming days once yeah, again. That's right. It was a nice weekend, right? Uh, mid to upper 80s. But uh, okay. today, back into those mid 90s. And then over the next several days, triple digit high, Sarah. So uh, get that sunscreen out and stay hydrated, folks. Turn that AC on. Here's a look at that hourly forecast getting into the 90s there this afternoon. We are going to be sitting around 94, 95 and then cooling down there into the 80s by this afternoon. Here's a look at that bus stop forecast as you're getting the kids ready for school this morning. Temperatures in the 60s this morning, clear skies and then of course things are warming up this afternoon there. 91 by 3 p.m. this afternoon. Here's a look at those current temperatures 58 out in Meridian, 52 out in Nampa. 
And then there's a uh, mountain home at uh, 54, 56 out in Ontario, and then those mountain regions at 34 out in Stanley, and then McCall there at 47 degrees. So nice mild start to your uh, Monday. Looking at our temperature history, that weekend bringing us near normal conditions, folks, but we are going to be getting back into that above normal temperature for the next several days with those triple digit highs. Today, though, mid 90s, 95 Boise, 95 Mountain Home, Idaho City there at 90. And then taking a look at our dog walking forecast as you're getting uh, ready to start your day, taking the pup out for a walk, 58 to 62, clear, warming up, and that sunrise, 7.05 a.m. Sarah. Thank you, Marco. Said to be a beautiful sunrise at that. Now, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. We are seeing a few more headlights, but uh, no reports of much to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, hey, don't forget about our question of the day. That question is, in a new poll, only 21% of Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. What is it? All right, we're getting some self-labeling going on this morning. Now, Marcos, you said kind, people calling themselves kind. Kind, kind or honest. Being yeah, honest, yeah, yeah, I like that. I was going to say, um, I, mine would maybe a morning person. That's, yeah. that's quite a low amount, though. I'm figuring the people that are watching us this morning, they're all morning people. Now, Tammy says a good listener. Yeah. Well, I like that. Yeah, let's Have see to what be a else. Good listener. <laughs> Danita is with me. Yeah, a morning person. Morning see, person. I think there are more night owls than morning people, but yes. I could be wrong. Janet says an optimistic. Opti or optimistic. I love that. I like that too. Starting it off on a positive note. Folks, if you think you know the answer, you still have about 15 minutes to guess, both on our Facebook or our Twitter. And of course, we'll read the answer right before CBS this morning. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, more southern U.S. states preparing for massive flooding. The damage they're expected to deal with. Here's a look at your local forecast today in Glens Ferry, sunny with a high of 96. Things are going to be clearing out tonight with a low of 59 and tomorrow very hot conditions with a high of 101. Marcos, breaking news this morning. This is a live look for you at the Kennedy Space Center where the Artemis spaceship launch it scrubbed as of this morning. Now, according to the Associated Press, that cancellation is because of fuel leaks. Now, the next launch attempt will not take place until Friday at the earliest. Now, the rocket, you'll recall, is one of the most powerful ever built by NASA. Beautiful live look for you there today. Well, down south, Mississippi, bracing for some significant flooding. The Pearl River near Jackson is expected to crest later today, and parts of other states are at risk of flooding too. Amy Kiley has the details. The sandbags are down in Jackson, Mississippi. At least 100 homes are at risk as floodwaters rise. Pearl River is forecast to crest today at 35.5 feet. During breaks in the days of rain, some residents left town. We're going to get out of here for safety. We've got a truck loaded up. There's my car is stuck. Can't drive. It's too low. Many who live here remember the punishing floods of 2020. The whole house was damaged. Uh, we had to gut it inside. All of the walls had to be out. Uh, we lost everything. Other areas of Mississippi could flood and even parts of neighboring states. We're looking at showers and thunderstorms, increasing the flood threat across portions of Texas, southern Louisiana, and a good portion of Florida. The water cycle that we learned in seventh grade is, is completely unpredictable now. Climate scientists warn the latest droughts and floods in the U.S. and other parts of the world won't be the last. We've built major cities next to these waters of water, and we've built modern supply chains based on predictable weather patterns of the last, you know, couple hundred years, and all of that is up in the air right now. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The death toll continuing to rise in Pakistan. That's where monsoon rains and flooding have killed more than 1,000 people, including more than 350 children. 
Now, the Pakistani army is helping with relief and rescue efforts as the government calls for international aid. You can see some of these photos here. The country experiencing its eighth cycle of monsoon rains. Now, normally Pakistan only has about three to four cycles of rain. At least 33 million people have been affected by the flooding. A little closer to home, the Rum Creek Fire near Galice, Oregon. It's spreading rapidly. Fire officials saying that fire has grown more to than 3,000 acres in size over the weekend, prompting several level three evacuations. So our firefighters are going in there and prepping homes. We're um, looking at water sources. We're um, scouting roads to make sure fire engines can get in and out. And then we're also helping up with mopping up and cleaning up in areas. Josephine County Public Health and the Red Cross are providing shelter for those forced to leave their homes. Now, so far, the Rum Creek Fire has burned more than over 4,000 acres. It's sitting at 0% containment. The next four months, from September to December, they bring about some of the strongest Santa Ana winds. And right now, some neighbors in California, they're already getting ready to leave their homes in case of a worst-case scenario. Officials worry that not all neighbors are fully prepared. With the brush around homes still so dry, they're sharing this blunt reminder. Fire doesn't care how much money you make uh, or the title at your position at your work. It only wants two things, fuel and oxygen. And if your house is standing in the way of that fuel source, it's going to eat it up. If you do ever find yourself in a situation where you need to evacuate, fire officials say think of the six P's. That's people, pets, important papers, prescriptions, pictures, personal computers, and plastic. That's as in your ATM or credit cards. Always want to make sure that you are prepared. And speaking of preparedness, if you're stepping out the door this morning, you may be feeling a little bit of a cooler breeze a out there. Yeah. I mean, a little nice uh, uh, dip chill for, for the morning. Yeah. Uh, a nice start. Not going to last long, though. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going to be warming up, Sarah, uh, into the mid 90s for today. Here's our today's special there warm 94 degrees. But it is a little cooler out today. We saw lows uh, around this time, uh, 70s last week. So right now we are seeing, uh, I think our temperature right now is 60 degrees, but looking at our satellite and radar, things are looking fairly clear, uh, staying dry for the next several days as we see those four consecutive triple digit highs kick in over the next couple of days. But right now, 59 degrees, south winds at five miles an hour, feels like 59 degrees out there. So it is some nice mild conditions this morning as you start your day, take the kids uh, out to school. 59 out in Meridian, 52 there in Nampa, and then out in uh, the rest of the valley there, 54 Mountain Home, 52 Nampa, and then Ontario there at 46 degrees. As I did uh, just talk about, those mid-90s kicking back in today, about 5, 6 degrees above normal for this time of year, 95 here in Boise, 95 Emmett, and then... Uh, mid 90s across the board there 94 out in Nampa 95 Mountain Home and then Baker City there at 90 as well so going to be a little warm this afternoon so here's what we could expect 90s today hazy conditions triple digits this week and that's smoke sticking around folks there's a look at that extended forecast hazy today you may see some areas uh, in the valley that are quite hazy uh, triple digits over the next four days hot on wednesday hot on friday and then back into the 90s there by the weekend taking a quick look at that extended mountain forecast hazy conditions as well for the next several days temperature staying in the 90s a little dip there and then back to 90s and sunny on sunday sarah Thank you, Marcos. It is 650 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Let's send it on over to Ron O'Brien for a look at your traffic forecast. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there? We've got uh, traffic on I-84 kicking in a little bit. The emerge slow traffic we often get at, say, 10 Mile Meridian Road, Eagle Road. There's been just a little bit that uh, shows up kind of inconsistent, but a little of that, and that's about it. Sun glare will be an issue here in the next little while. Sun getting ready to come up, and, of course, if you're getting ready to get out the door for the uh, 7 o'clock hour or 7 o'clock rush, that's when things will really get busy between uh, 7 and 8. Watch out area school zones, of course. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a night filled with music, a look at the MTV Music Awards and some of its biggest announcements.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.53. Welcome back. The MTV Video Music Awards, they were held last night at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. And it was a night filled with music, some old and some new. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the VMA recap. To kick off the 2022 MTV VMAs, it was a throwback to 2006. Fergie starting the show with her hit Glamorous, sampled this year by rapper Jack Harlow. Harlow's song First Class won the award for Song of the Summer. Thank you to Fergie for coming out with me tonight and clearing this song. It was a night packed with big performances from Lizzo to Eminem and Snoop Dogg in the metaverse to Artist of the Year winner Bad Bunny performing at Yankee Stadium. After the verdict in his defamation trial, Johnny Depp appeared several times as MTV's iconic Moon Man, saying he needs the work. I just want you guys to know that I'm available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings, wakes, any old thing you need. As for the big wins, Taylor Swift took the top prize video of the year for All Too Well the short film, and she shared some news with fans. I thought it might be a fun moment to tell you that that my brand new album comes out October 21st. And Harry Styles will bring home the Album of the Year award back to Harry's house. Um, he accepted from his concert stage in New York. I would like to say thank you to all of my fans who voted. Thank you so, so much. Madonna was nominated for her recent album, her 69th VMA nomination. She's the only artist nominated in each of the VMA's five decades. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Nicki Minaj also had a big night, not only hosting, but performing and winning awards. She did a medley of some of her biggest hits, even receiving the Video Vanguard Award, which honors her lifetime achievements. Well, if you've been meaning to catch some of the latest blockbuster releases in theaters, you're in luck. Movie theaters and tickets, as well as, well, those theaters are selling tickets that are just $3, but it's only for one day. It's this Saturday. Ticket prices will be discounted on more than 30,000 screens, for more no no more than three dollars a pop. Now major chains include Regal Cinemas, and they're taking part. Now Labor Day weekend traditionally one of the slowest weekends for the silver screen. All right, well it's time for our question of the day. In a new poll, only 21 percent of Americans describe themselves as being this kind of person. That answer, Marcos. A cat person. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I was gonna say. Hope y'all are having a great morning out there. Maybe love on your cat a little if you're that cat person. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.